Today is Tuesday, August 8th, 2023. I'm here at the Bighorn Pass Trailhead in the northwestern section of Yellowstone National Park, headed out for an eight day backpacking trip. I've never hiked this area before, been wanting to check it out for a few years, and I'm pretty stoked to finally make it up here and get a chance to check out this part of the Yellowstone wilderness that I'm unfamiliar with. A little bit later on, I'll tell you more about my route and what I'm doing out here. For today, I've got about four or five miles to go to make it to camp. didn't take long to go from warm and sunny to cold and wet which has disrupted my filming for the day looks like the skies are clearing up a little bit now think i'm about half a mile from camp Okay, it's just past 5 p.m. and I'm here at campsite WB1. Really beautiful spot right here on the Gallatin River. Surrounded by these awesome big open meadows. Got rained on a little bit. That kind of prevented me from getting a whole lot of video today. It still wasn't a bad day. I got drizzled on but wasn't completely soaked didn't really see any wildlife today and the only person I saw was a horse packer who looked like he was headed out. It's around 8.30, I'm working on dinner. Sun came out pretty nicely once I got to camp and then I just had kind of a lazy afternoon here. Fantastic sight though, views here are awesome. I think once I finish eating, I'm gonna head on to bed. Pretty exhausted from the last few days of traveling. This is gonna be a wrap for day number one. See you in the morning.
Good morning. It's day number two. Last night was freaking cold. By far the coldest August night I've experienced out here. Slept pretty well though. I was exhausted from the last few days. My plan for today is to hike over Bighorn Pass and into campsite 4G2. That's going to be around 12 and a half miles and I think I've got about 2400 feet of elevation gain. Looks like I'm going to see a lot of cool things along this route. Plenty of big open country, quite a few backcountry lakes, especially the last few days of this trip. And I've got what I think is a pretty cool story about why I wanted to do this route. Whenever I get a chance to get the map out and kind of walk you guys through what I'm doing, I'll tell you a little bit more about that. I'm just excited to be back in Yellowstone. Eight days out here in the backcountry, it's the longest trip I've ever done out here. And I've got another one coming up in a few weeks out to the thoroughfare. And it's just great to be out here doing it. center there is a pretty awesome look down through the Gallatin River Valley.
Look at this. As best I can tell, this boulder lays right across the trail, leading me to believe that a rock fall brought it here. Now look at this one. You can distinctly see the path where it came down and stopped. How awesome is that? I got bluff charged by a grizzly bear right along Fawn Creek. I stopped and was looking down in the bend in the creek and was noticing some pretty high sagebrush around and thinking to myself, I need to start making a little bit more noise. And then before I even could process what happened, I heard something rustling in the vegetation down by the creek. And then he came straight at me, got within six feet maybe. I pulled my bear spray. He turned the other direction, ran behind a tree, kind of walked around the other side and looked at me for a second. And I was just about to spray him. And he took off the other direction. And I made my way across the creek. And uh, yeah, that was scary. I thought I was a goner. Think I've got maybe three miles to go to camp, something like that. Bear spray is staying in my hand the rest of the day. Oh.
little bit past seven. Just made it to camp. Later than I wanted to, but that's how it goes sometimes. I'm freaking beat. This was a hell of a day. I'm gonna get everything set up and get some dinner started. And then I'll try to do a recap of today. And of course, talk about the bear. All right, recap of day two. First of all, this calls for bourbon. <sighs> okay, so the hike today was pretty awesome. About 12 and a half miles from our previous campsite over Fawn Pass to this campsite here at the Gardner River. Lots of big wild country, huge open meadows, wildflowers in bloom, just beautiful scenery most of the day. Some of it was in the trees. There were a few sections of old fire burn that I had to go through. I wanted to stop and film some video from the top of Fawn Pass, but I got up there, had lunch, enjoyed the view of the little lake, and realized that I was way behind where I wanted to be. So there were a few reasons for that. I got a late start because all of my stuff was wet and I was trying to let it dry out. And this pack weight is just kicking my ass. First time I've packed eight days of food in a long time. And uh, it's a rough first few days. I usually have about two and a half pounds of food per day. so. Do the math, it's a heavy haul till about day three or four. Okay, so let's talk about the bear. So from Fawn Pass, I had around seven miles to go to camp and I was probably about two miles into that and had about five miles left. I remember I'd stopped, had checked the GPS, was still kind of down on myself for the pace that I was making and so I was in that frame of mind where I'm like, I've just got to make miles. I've got to make miles. I wasn't stopping to take a lot of photos. I was trying to pay attention to areas where the vegetation was growing up high, visibility was limited. And of course, areas where you're near a water source where you can't hear very well. You know, I was yelling out, hey bear, every few minutes and clanking my poles for a good portion of the day. And I came to this little section of Fawn Creek where I hadn't yelled out anything in maybe a minute or two. And I stopped and I was looking at this bend in the creek and just kind of enjoying the scenery, looking down in the water, seeing if I saw any fish swimming. And from the bend in the creek, there was probably about a six or eight foot drop. So I'm up above the creek a little bit and I can see at the bend that I'm standing at, but probably 20 yards in either direction, there was a bunch of vegetation growing up and I really couldn't see anything. And I remember stopping and just enjoying that view for a second and look to my left which was the way I was going to be going and pretty much immediately said to myself hey this looks like some pretty thick brush here need to make sure I'm yelling out and as soon as that thought passed through my head I saw bushes shaking like crazy down by the creek I actually heard it before I saw it and I had not seen any bear sign the entire day. I'd seen a ton of elk prints actually. Before I could even wrap my mind around what was going on, that bear came shooting out of the bushes and barreling right toward me. I reached down, grabbed my bear spray, pulled it out of the holster, and he bluff charged me before I could get the safety off. And I thought for sure he was gonna run right over me. And honestly, in that moment, I was just hoping that he would run over me and keep on going and that I wouldn't be hurt too bad to get the hell out of there. I mean, I really didn't think there was any chance that that encounter was going to be as fortunate as it was. So he bluff charged, cut around behind a tree. In the couple seconds that took, I had my bear spray all the way out, safety off, pointed right in his direction. 
he walked around the tree, took a look at me, and I had my thumb on the trigger. I was just about to spray him. So in the moment he was rushing at me, I wasn't in as much shock as I thought I would be. Honestly, it felt a lot like when you're driving down the highway and a car pulls out in front of you that you kind of anticipated was maybe gonna roll through a stop sign and you have to hit your brakes and your stuff comes flying out of the seat, but you were never really in danger of hitting the car. That's how it felt. Now to be clear, I was in complete danger of being mauled. I could see into his eyes. He was soaking wet from getting out of the creek. I could hear him huffing. Uh, it was just unreal. I feel like overall, I stayed calmer than I expected that I would. I really thought I would probably freak out in a situation like that. I had my bear spray right there where it's accessible. You know, I practiced drawing it and I've always kind of wondered in a situation like that, would I react quick enough? And I can tell you with 100% certainty today, I did not. I was about two seconds too late getting that bear spray out and getting the safety off and my thumb on the trigger I've joked in some of my other videos that every time you hear a noise, you're always certain it's a bear and usually it's something harmless. Today, I heard the noise, I saw it, and it was a large male grizzly and I am super lucky to be here. I've also wondered if I had an encounter like that, would it change my opinion about coming out here and backpacking and doing this. Shockingly at the moment, not really. I've been coming out here for years. I always knew there was a chance something like that may happen eventually. First time I've ever seen a grizzly on trail actually. And I always hoped that my first several grizzly sightings on trail would be two or 300 yards away up on a ridge line somewhere with a roaring river between me and him. You can't always get what you want, I guess. But uh, it's a day I'll never forget, that's for sure. My dinner timer just went off and I'm freaking starving. This is gonna be the end of day number two. Hopefully I'll see you in the morning. Good night. Good morning, we've made it to day number three had thunder and lightning storms going for a good portion of the night last night but surprisingly I slept pretty well didn't get very cold so that was good today I've got to hike about 13 and a half miles up over Electric Peak and out to Sportsman Lake really looking forward to seeing the views throughout the day I need to try to keep a better pace than what I did yesterday so I'm probably not gonna film a whole lot I will make sure to stop and get some shots as I come across the good ones. But I definitely don't want to be hiking across that bear management area as it gets close to evening time. That was just a little bit sketchy. So I mentioned that I had a story to tell about this trip. Back behind me is Bunsen Peak. And the very first time we came to Yellowstone, that was the first real hike I did up to the summit. I had came in from the East Coast, had never been, 
at an altitude above like 4,000 feet before and I felt like I was going to die on the way up there. But I'll never forget when I made it to the summit, looking out into all this and just thinking, wow, I wonder what it would be like to get out and see some of that. And years later, here I am out here doing it. It feels pretty freaking awesome.
It is super late. I'm just now getting to camp. I am beat. I am starving. This is all for day number three. Good night. Good morning, day four. Yesterday was a tough day. 13 plus miles, 3,400 feet of elevation gain, and somewhere around mile nine, my body was just zapped energy-wise. My back and shoulders and feet were screaming at me. I actually discovered when I got to camp, I have a couple blisters I need to deal with. I almost never get blisters out on the trail. Really couldn't keep my feet dry. There were a lot of ankle deep water crossings throughout the day. Scenery was beautiful though. The first part of the hike, I got a really awesome view of Bunsen Peak. And then I kind of made my way down near the road just south of Mammoth before I headed back the other way to start the climb up Electric Pass. The views from Electric Pass were freaking stunning. Uh, just absolutely awesome. And I think that was around mile 10 or 11. Stopped and took a little bit of a break up there and seeing that view gave me a little bit of a second wind. Then on the other side of the pass, you drop down into this steep hole, just really kind of sketchy switchbacks coming down through the woods. <sighs> Not fun, but I made it to the meadow here and saw an elk right as I came out of the trees. And even though it was getting kind of dark on me, this is just gorgeous. Uh, yeah. This campsite is probably one of my top three that I've stayed at here in the park. The actual campsite sits up on this little bluff that overlooks the meadow and you can kind of see the lake. And the views are just stunning. I'll get some footage down closer to the lake here in a little while. And even as you go back into the trees where the tent sites are, and there are a lot of nice flat tent sites, you can still sort of get a filtered view of the meadows from all around. And just a really great campsite. I've got a shorter day today, around eight miles, and I think I have to climb close to 2,000 feet up to campsite WD4 at High Lake. These boulders like this are just all over the place back in here. I've got my feet all taped up. Down there is my little first aid kit that I carry. And I always include some moleskin and medical tape in there. Really comes in handy when you have stuff like this going on.
I'm pretty sure that is a wolf track. These are all headed back the way that I came from. Now that is a thing of beauty. It's around 5.30 and I made it to camp with plenty of time to do some laundry, chill in my hammock, and enjoy some whiskey and a cigar later. Awesome day. There are a few things in life that hit better than a purple Hawaiian punch and a mountain house lasagna on a good day. There's not a whole lot to tell about today. Most of the hike was in the woods, but occasionally opened up into some nice small meadows. Didn't see any wildlife. I saw three people, some very nice ladies who were on their way to Sportsman Lake. I was moving better and feeling much better than I had been the last few days, so that was a bit of relief. Days two and three were both 13, 14 mile days. And I'm not a huge distance hiker. I don't mind doing a day like that every now and again. But doing two of them back to back was definitely a little ambitious. But I had to get through it to make the permit work. So it is what it is. The rest of the trip is all going to be shorter six, eight mile days, which is more in my comfort zone, if we're being honest. This is going to be it for day number four. See you in the morning.
morning day five. Last night was another cold one. I also discovered I have a pinhole leak in my sleeping pad. Had to get out and blow it back up about three or four times last night. Hopefully it doesn't get any worse in the coming days. And whenever I get back home, I can find where the leak is and get it repaired. Today's probably going to be my easiest day of the trip. It's about 4.8 miles over to campsite WE6 at Crescent Lake. Going uphill the first half and then downhill the second half of the hike. Right here is Mammoth Hot Springs and over here is Highway 191 coming north from West Yellowstone. All through here is the Gallatin Bear Management Area. So day one, I started at the Bighorn Pass Trailhead, came down to the Gallatin River campsite right here. Then day two, came up and over Fawn Pass. Right around here was where I got bluff charged by the bear. Stayed here at the Gardner's Hole campsite. Leaving that campsite on day three, I got that awesome view of Bunsen Peak right around here. But I had to make it all the way up to Sportsman Lake. Then yesterday I left Sportsman Lake, came across here up to High Lake where I'm camped currently. Today I will be coming across here to Crescent Lake, then the following day up here to Shelf Lake. Then I'm coming down and I'm permitted to spend my last night here at the Specimen Creek campsite, but I may go ahead and finish out the last two miles and hike out a day early.
It's around 3 p.m. and I've made it here to Crescent Lake. Today's hike was awesome. Beautiful views, no wildlife, one person, nice, short, easy day, spectacular campsite, and I can have a fire tonight. I wish I'd brought a longer range lens because they look like tiny little specks with what I have. But right in the center of the frame are a couple of mountain goats. You can barely see that white speck moving around at the top of the bright green patch. Good morning. We have made it to day number six. Last night was a good night. Sat for a while and watched a family of mountain goats across the lake, then enjoyed a nice campfire. Today I've got a pretty short but really steep climb up to campsite WE7 at Shelf Lake. Tonight's campsite was not part of my original permit. It was actually a last minute change. I made it to backcountry office when I got in here. Looks like it's around 3.7 miles. And then I may be able to take a side trip once I get up there. We'll see how it goes. Last look at Crescent Lake before I hike out here. Gorgeous. So far, the hike's been mostly steep switchbacks and dense forest. Finally starting to open up a little. Not a bad spot for my last night out here. Okay, I've decided on a change of plans. I'm going to hike out of here today. 
The lake is gorgeous, but I don't love this campsite. There's really nowhere flat to set up a tent. It's already pretty cold and windy in the middle of the day. And I made it up here. I don't feel like I'm missing out on anything by not staying the night. Also, Amber is in Yellowstone right now doing some car camping and backpacking with a girlfriend of hers. And I had already planned on hiking out a day early tomorrow so I could try to meet up with them in Cook City. So this is just kind of expediting that by a day. I'm not sure exactly where they are today or when would be the last time she tried to contact me. Twice on this trip, I got up on a ridge and had enough cell signal to send her a message and kind of check in and let her know that I'm all right. So hopefully when I get out of here, she's updated me on where they're at. And at least by tomorrow, I can meet up with them and we can enjoy a few days out here together. Kind of been thinking about her a good bit while I'm out here. This is the first year that we haven't backpacked together. And I know we'd both appreciate at least having one day to spend in Yellowstone, just kind of chilling before. I've actually got to drive back down to Denver to catch my flight home. And they're flying out of Bozeman the day before, something like that. Anyways, that makes day six the last day of the trip. Let's see what we see on the way back down. Thus far, the hike back to the trailhead has been a bunch of this. So I've not really filmed a lot. Nice little meadow here. Almost at the Specimen Creek Trailhead. Specimen Creek. The last time I checked in with you, I was hiking out of the Specimen Creek Trailhead. And once I got there, it took about an hour for me to hitch a ride back to my car. Very nice gentleman happened to work at a place called Old Town Cafe, which is where I wound up having dinner last night. Always kind of had an issue finding good food in West Yellowstone. So I'm thankful for the ride and the recommendation. That worked out pretty well for me. As it turned out, Amber and her friend got turned around on their hike into Cascade Lake yesterday due to a grizzly with cubs, a uh, park ranger actually suggested that they abandon trip, which they did, and they ended up getting a place at Flag Ranch, and I got just enough cell signal yesterday that we were able to communicate, and I went down there and got in kind of late, but we wound up having a campfire and telling some pretty awesome stories about the week that we've had out here. I'll try my best not to make this a half hour monologue, but I want to do a little bit of a recap of the trip and talk about a few things that I kind of forgot to mention along the way. Night number one along the Gallatin River, I actually heard owls throughout most of the night, which was really cool. Day two was the bear encounter day. So I noticed that starting the trip off, everything on the western side of Fawn Pass, you could tell was heavily used trail. And that's par for the course for most of the places I've hiked out here in Yellowstone. All around the Beckler River and Lamar River and Hart Lake where we've done all of our big trips, those are pretty heavily used trails. You can tell that they get a lot of horse traffic and a lot of foot traffic. Once I made it over Fawn Pass heading down the east side is the only section of trail I've hiked in Yellowstone where I didn't see a single boot print, a single hoof print, there was no signs of that trail having been used at all. And I probably should have let that be a sign to stay more alert for bear activity. 
Not that constant use of a trail is a guarantee that you won't see bears, but if it looks like a section of trail isn't getting hiked on at all, any bears that are out there probably aren't expecting to see people. I also forgot to mention that about a mile after I had the bear encounter, I saw some very fresh bear scat on the trail. So I'm thinking that I was coming this way, he was coming that way, he was down on the creek doing his business, and that was just kind of me being in the wrong place at the wrong time. Thankfully, it worked out well for me. That could have really gone badly. Day three was the longest, hardest day of the hike. I believe it was around 14 miles. I know it was over 3,000 feet in elevation gain. I was really bummed that I was so late getting to camp. Sportsman Lake was such a cool spot, and it's really unfortunate that I didn't have an opportunity to spend more time there. That's a place I definitely hope I can go back and revisit in the future. On day four, when I was hiking up to High Lake, I actually hiked about three or four miles where I saw constant wolf tracks on the trail. I know I got video footage of a couple of them, but I never really stopped to talk about the fact that there were very fresh, obvious wolf tracks for several miles that day. And the tracks were facing opposite the direction I was headed the entire time. And the three ladies I met who were out backpacking that day actually asked me if I'd seen any wolves because they had been following the tracks headed the same way they were for a few hours. It's not uncommon to find a wolf track or two in certain spots if you know where to look for them, but I didn't really expect to see them up there and I've never seen so many out here. Day five was definitely my favorite day of the trip. In between High Lake and Specimen Lake, you get up on this ridge line where you've just got gorgeous expansive views looking north and south and it kind of skirts where the park boundary is up there for a minute just beautiful and then specimen lake was a real surprise i know i did at least a little bit of research about all the campsites before this trip but it was kind of a spur of the moment thing i was really blown away by how beautiful specimen lake was uh that was just a real treat and then day six which actually wound up being the last day of the trip even though i had planned to do eight days i wasn't originally permitted to camp at shelf lake I was permitted to stay at one of the campsites along Specimen Creek and was thinking about doing a side hike up to Shelf Lake. And then when I got to the backcountry office, they were able to move my campsite up there. There weren't really a whole lot of views to be seen on the hike up. And I think I talked about that a little bit, but it was just really steep trail and thick trees all around. But the lake itself was beautiful. Uh, that's a really awesome lake too. But when I got up there, it was one o'clock, and even though the lake was awesome, I wasn't really loving the campsite. And it was really cold and windy up there, even in the middle of the day. And I had been having some issues with my sleep system and cold nights. And I was kind of looking at the time and realizing, hey, it's only eight hours to the trailhead. It was an awesome six days. There was so much packed into that time frame that I felt like I had seen and done what I wanted for this hike, and hiking out just seemed like the right choice to make. And then on the hike out, I didn't really film a whole lot. I was trying to make good time, and the last few miles of trail, you're just kind of hiking through old fire burn. But overall, it was an awesome trip, fantastic hike, one of the coolest experiences I've had in Yellowstone highs and lows wonderful scenery the bear encounter was by far one of the most surreal experiences i've ever had every day afterward i would kind of play it back through in my head and think about should i have done things differently should i have reacted differently it happened so quickly and my adrenaline was so high it took me a day or two to piece together exactly what happened and how it happened and that was a learning experience looking back now looking at the terrain the fact that I was so close to the water source that there was so much thick vegetation around and plenty of places for a large animal like that to hide and the creek was making noise so even though I was trying to yell out every few minutes I should have been more diligent about that and I just should have been more alert and aware 
Also, I should have grabbed my bear spray as soon as I saw those bushes shaking. I think I mentioned this before, it's easy to get freaked out by a squirrel that sounds obnoxiously loud out here. I mean, there's so many little noises that you spend enough time out here, you kind of become immune to them. But that was definitely a learning lesson that you can't come out here and get complacent. You can't come out here and just feel like, well, I've been out here for years and I've never seen a bear, so it's probably not going to happen. They're wild animals, and this is a wild place, and they're unpredictable, and you never know what's going to happen at any given moment. That's part of what I love about coming out here. Uh, it's just, it's wild. It's the definition of wild. There's no better way to describe it. I still love it here. I still feel like this is the most special place on earth, and it was a fantastic week. I've got a few more days before I gotta fly home. I'm gonna head up to the Beartooths today, gonna meet Amber and her friend for dinner tonight, and then tomorrow I'm gonna go down and spend the day in the Tetons, and then I've gotta drive back to Colorado, and I've got about a day to spend there before it's time to fly home. Thank you guys so much for watching. I know this has gotten to be a pretty long video at this point, so I appreciate it very much if you're still with me. Please take a minute to like or subscribe or leave a comment. I really, really enjoy hearing feedback from you all. Some of the feedback I hear from people who have been some of these places or always wanted to visit them, they really help make this worthwhile. So once again, thank you guys so much and I'll see you next time.